Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's been doing good and feeling great. Today, we are joined by one of the dominant forwards in the NBA, Indiana Pacers star Isaiah Jackson. How you feeling today, man? Thanks for joining the CV. I'm feeling good, man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you cutting out time for us. Um, I want to kind of kick off going back a little bit. I think everybody's journey in the beginning is extremely important. Um, earlier on, you were named Jordan Brand Classic. You were on the Jordan Brand Classic roster in high school, which to me is like a huge achievement. Um, such yeah. early on as well, just kind of as a testament to your talent so early in your career. Um, what was kind of like the, your goals in that time? Because that, that could be considered a goal today as well. But like, what was that goal like? For you to kind of hit that um that kind of like moment in your career so early on and kind of how did that like affect your goals going into your senior year? Of course, knowing you yeah. wanted to go into the NBA, but how did that kind of play into it? Uh I mean, I think it played a huge role. Uh just the way I started to uh see the game and uh like in high school, like the Jordan Brand Classic game and McDonald's game was like a, always a dream of mine to play in. Uh so when I got that invite, uh this it just sort of helped me just take my mindset to a different level. Uh, like, more so just thinking, like, yeah, I can do this. Uh, I mean, I can go to college and I can uh, hopefully make it to the league or whatever, so. I love that. I love that. Yes, it could definitely like a big, like, uh, not even just confidence booster, but it's a testament to your game. Like I said earlier, like, you just, you move through with the utmost confidence and knowing where you're at that level, but then understanding much room to grow We keep going forward and hitting these, like, you know, milestones as early on. So I love that. You know, you also come from a high school, a lot of like this, like distinguished athletes as well. Like, what would you say to like the the next generation of athletes mm -hmm. coming from that same uh come from that same place who are trying to follow in your footsteps or or, or um maybe even try to be better? You know, the goal is yeah. always be better than the month before you. So, what would you kind of yeah. say to that next class, that next generation coming from there? Yeah, I would definitely say uh, strive to be better, uh, better than me. Uh, don't be don't be me. Be be yourself in every way. Uh, but just working hard, uh, being in school, uh, just doing your, make sure you're on top of your grades and stuff. And uh, whatever sports you're dealing with, uh, just make sure you're going at it hard, man. Because, I mean, anything's possible. Do hard work and uh, just listen to your coaches and stuff and having an open mind, uh, being coachable. Uh, I think those are, like, the main, main points that you should have uh, coming in, the, like, just in, in general, just being in high school, but especially uh, at our, uh, my school that I went to, so. I love that. I love that. I think even that uh, being coachable piece, like that is the yeah. big thing in today where I think we live in a day and age where everything is very self-centered. Like yeah, the skill right. you have, the shots you can make, you being like yeah. the main star. And it's really like those things are important. But if you're not coachable, if you can't be put in a position where you then need to thrive for the betterment of your team or you need to get better just in general yeah. to keep growing you know, it can hinder your greatness. So I, I love these folks that, you know, being coachable and also staying on top of the things outside of the court that will keep yeah. you being great. So I love you spoke to that. Yeah, for sure. Now, also being on Community Voices, it's all about having an impact and continuing to uplift voices and impact the community. That being yeah. said, we'll be donating 15K to the IJ for the Kids Dream Builders Foundation. Um, Dream Builders, it's... Uh, is strives to make like a simple for athletes to build their own unique programs and initiatives and host own community and fundraising events so they can continue having that impact that I speak about on every episode. It's those events, those moments, those interactions that change kids' lives, that save uh that saves kids' lives, that change their trajectory, their mentality, and really kind of gives them that hope, that faith, that resource uh to continue their bright futures that they have ahead of them. Um, you started IJ for Kids. Uh, when you started it, where did that inspiration come from for the foundation? Not just, I, I know the baseline answers, you know, just having one to use your platform and help, but is there anything, a specific moment in your life or specific experiences that you've just overseen that was like, you know what, when I get when I get to my, my top point, when I get to my dream, I'm going to make mm -hmm. sure I reach down. Like, what was that like? Uh, I think this is my upbringing, uh, where I came from. Came from a very humble beginning, uh, uh, but uh, I went to. It's actually it's like it's growing up. Me and my siblings, we went to a. Uh, it was called the Baldwin Center. It was like a uh, like a rec center in a way for kids and stuff. Uh, like on weekends, we used to go on like bike rides, different field trips and stuff, and uh, like I used to be around like peer my peers and stuff, like kids from different schools, so. 
it was like a dope experience for me. Uh, so when me growing up, like being in that situation and stuff, like I just wanted to sort of, you know, do something. Uh, Cause I don't, it's not, I don't even, I think it closed, might've closed down. So it's like, I want to be able to like be that, you know, be that light to kids. Uh, Cause growing up, we may really didn't have any, anybody to look up to. Like nobody was hosting basketball camps, doing giveaways and stuff. So, uh, when I was when we started the foundation, that was like one of my main goals. That's why I was uh, telling my my board and stuff that like that's what I wanted to do. Uh, just reach out to kids, the the kids that's less fortunate, help them uh, see there's a way. And uh, like I was in the same position when he growing up, just like you. So if I can, if I did it, then you can too. I love that, and I love even you speaking to you know it unfortunately closing down, but I think. I always think everything kind of happens for a reason has having its purpose. And though it's unfortunate yeah. that it closed down, you know, I, I'd like to think that it was it was what it was for you and your family during that time of what it needed mm -hmm. to be so that yeah. that could plant that seed in you. So then you can carry on what it gave you to the others with your platform yeah. as it like grew into you and built into you. Now you can give back and be what you wish or what you would have liked to have seen early in your career in your community for others. Right. I think it's like so important. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. And on, on top of that, too, I think uh, one of the recent things you did, uh, you think you partnered with Group 1001 or 1001. I'm really bad with saying numbers these days. Yeah. I shouldn't be. But uh, yeah. and Habitat have for Humanity to help actually mm -hmm. build a home for Indiana family, which to me, yeah. I think a lot of the work – that, that that you do and that these foundations do is just so important. And and I think sometimes it's the impacts where you not only just like have the moment at the event or, you know, you have the interaction. But sometimes it's like knowing that you're literally changing a family's life and not, not even just changing their lives, but like you could be changing. These are the kind of things that change generations, break That's generational curses. All, these, these are those things. And I feel like building that new home is one of those things where you just maybe not even just change this family line, but you just changed their whole lifeline as it continues. Awesome. What does that feel like? That's such a big impactful thing to be able to bring to the world. Like, what does that feel like and, and have impact in these communities and families directly in that way? Uh, it's definitely a dope experience, man. Uh, I mean, I, like, like I said, growing up and seeing how I was raised and stuff, uh, I was taught to, to give back as much as you can. Uh, like, I think that's what God uh, sort of placed me, uh, like, put me in this position to do. So I'm trying to just help as much as I can. But it's, it's definitely dope uh, seeing the smiles on the people, the family's face, uh, seeing the people that I uh, connect to and uh, can touch and stuff. Uh, it's, it's dope. I, I love that. I love that. I want to, uh, I want to. I want to also, before I kind of wrap things up, I know I want to respect your time, too. I want to also go back a little bit into, we talked about the beginning of your career, talked about the impact yeah. that you're having off the court. And I want to yeah. end this with a little bit of on-court talk here. Um, amazing run last year. I mean, I yeah. think the, the 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 Pacers have been showing as of recent years, no matter what the media says or how the media, because, you know, everything goes to the big cities. Nah, Indiana is not anything to play with. They are here. Yeah. They're here to stay. They're making noise. And it is a team that sleep on them if you want to when when yeah. it comes to game night, <laughs> you're gonna have to figure it out. Um, yeah. <laughs> what what is this what what are, what are your, your goals for this upcoming season? And I think more so not just I think of course the goal is to make it to the playoffs. The goal is to go to the NBA finals and give your team the best chance to, to do that. So but I guess more so maybe the better question is what are your goals individually that will help lead to that to that uh team team goal uh i think one of the main things is stepping to my own this year uh just being more comfortable uh with the playing time that i'm uh, probably gonna see uh this year uh with the experience that i got from the playoffs i feel like that helped me tremendously uh, with my game and stuff so uh i mean my jump shot i think uh jump shooting uh just being able to stretch the floor i think that's gonna help the team out uh help me out as well uh because I think that's just going to open up the rest of my game because uh, I'm going to be able to dribble drive uh, when I get the contestant and stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be that then uh, defense as well. Uh, I want to be one of the best defensive uh, players in the, the league. So uh, 
just continue to work on that, uh, watching film, being in the film room and stuff, uh, working on my strength and stuff. Uh, so when the season does come, I'm ready uh, and healthy. Uh, so. I love that. I love it. And I love this. It's that defensive mindset too. I know, I know that I think a lot of uh, kids, this generation and people just see the scoring part. They, see, they, want to, they want to see somebody make a jump shot, drop somebody, yeah. but we really yeah. don't. I, I think sometimes we don't live in a, a world where we appreciate the defense, not even just the, the yeah. blocks, but like how hard are you making these, like how hard are you making these stars work for their yeah. shot? Like how are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, making those possessions that we don't necessarily see on the scoreboard, but make just as big of an impact. Like I, I love that you even spoke to that piece, too. That, that's critical. That's critical. That is. Most definitely is. And uh, I wish a lot of people, like, <laughs> sort of, like, liked it more. But, I mean, it is what it is. It's, like you said, it's like a, it's a scoring league. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. A couple more things. I, I think – Maybe this question more so ties into to the family piece, and I've never really asked the question before. But uh, I think you know a lot of players play in front of their families, and um, I know that I think believe last year you got to play in front of your grandma for the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those kind of things, like sometimes they they go unseen, sometimes they go unheard, they don't get covered, anything like that. But I think they're so special. They're so special yeah. for like not just like your mother or your father, but when you're when your grandmother gets to, to used to see you play or like your grandfather or like cousins that like you grew up with that were really close but never really got to see you play. When those moments happen, it, it's so special because it can just it, it's such a big moment for you and nobody knows about it except you and the ones who are who are there with you and sharing that moment. What was what was that experience like? Because I always kind of imagine that it's also as exciting as it is. It's also the nerves of like, ugh, like if this is the only time that she's gonna be able to come see me play, I gotta nah, between the legs. <laughs> I gotta go crazy. <laughs> nah, facts. Uh, yeah, it was against Detroit. Uh, like when well, my mom, because my mom's told me that she was supposed to be coming, uh, like a couple days beforehand. So, mm -hmm. like, I sort of like was getting into to prepare because this is time during the season where I wasn't really playing or anything. So, like, I'm thinking like I'm not probably gonna get in, uh, but. Lo and behold, uh, during our uh, our shoot around, coach was like, uh, like he was like having me like run through the the plays and stuff. So I'm like, I gotta be playing. So when I like when he once he told me he was like, yeah, is he you gonna be playing tonight? Uh, and sort of something just clicked. Like yeah, I gotta I gotta show up and show out. And uh, I went out there. I think I we won the game, of course. Then uh, I'm not for sure what my stat line was. Yeah, double double uh, for sure. Oh, uh, was it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I had to show up. Uh, then I got to see her after and stuff. Uh, so it was a dope experience, man. It was. Uh, she was very happy for me. Uh, I'm glad I got to show out and uh, <laughs> and do bad. So uh, it was. It was fun though. It was, it was super dope. I love that, and and I think, like I said, just moments like that, those games that, like you know matter because of those things that we don't see, like being able to. I mean, even the fact yeah. that it all worked out, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I think that's I think that's all God too. Just making it all work out too, and just having that. Nah, uh, most definitely, most definitely. I want to ask you one more thing before we kind of get ready to wrap things up, and I think it's kind of is a great way to um, bring the conversation to a close. Okay. We talked about like your goals individually going into the, to the upcoming season. Um, sure. We talked about experience, or we talked about some information and feedback, and just like your guidance to the upcoming generation of hoopers coming from your area and just in general. Um, yeah. I would love to, to wrap this up by just asking you, going into this next season and taking away everything that you've done, all the games in the NBA in general, what yeah. have you kind of learned about yourself through these ups and downs that yeah. has been so impactful into you being the most effective you can be going into the season? What I mean by that is I think – in areas that we struggle, it shows us, it shows up in different places that we didn't even know. Yeah. It could be like, oh, yeah, like, fine. you know, outside the court, it may show up. Like, oh, I'm, I'm bad at that on the court. And that is kind of, that's why I struggle here. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll kind of yeah. go inside to show you so you can grow. What are some things that you learned about yourself that are able to like help you in that, like in, just in general in life and on the court? Uh one thing that I the correlate on and off the court is my time management. Uh, like, not going to lie, my rookie year used to be 
really bad. Uh, just having a lot of free time, didn't really know what to do. Uh, and sometimes like I miss stuff because I'm just a lot, it's just a lot going on. Uh, but I sort of started to, uh, like as the years progressed, uh, like, and even like last year, I think that just being in the playoffs, being on the, like a set schedule, it sort of just helped me, like, sort of helped me, like, sort of focus, be able to focus more on like the stuff I have to, to do, uh, like the objectives I have to get done and uh, get to bed at a certain time, stuff like that, that like beforehand, I was just, <laughs> I was staying up all night playing a game, but it took me a minute to like figure out like actually like sleep, like sleep and eating right, all that stuff. Like it plays a big role in how you perform. Uh, and like you can see during the playoffs, like I was like going to make sure I was going to sleep way earlier, like meditating doing those stuff like praying, like I was just doing it all, and like it all just came about this year. So, uh, yes, I think those are, I probably touched on like four four things, but like those are definitely the things that I sort of picked up on and uh, just, it helps me, helps me a lot, so. I love it, man. Like I said, I, I think all those things are going to be, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful that you learn those things recently because I think yeah. the whole point of the question too is that now, you're able to continue those things in the season and actually continue them with a good flow instead yeah. of having to like figure out how to make them work during a season yeah. where you got practice and regular yeah. season and family and foundation. And so I, I, I love the even, yeah, I love that. That's gonna be beautiful to see how it all shows up on the court and off the court. That's a fact. That's a fact. Well, listen, man, thank you so much for cutting out time, man. And of course, like I said. I'll be keeping an eye out for you this season just to see that defensive impact, especially that you have this season. And I appreciate, you know, cutting out time for us and the foundation, the community impact that you have as well. Just understands. I appreciate it very much. Appreciate you too, my guy. Appreciate Absolutely. you guys for donating too, man. It means a lot. Means a Absolutely. Lot. That's what it's all about. Thank you all very much for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. And we'll see you all next time. Take care. All right.